Hello. Did you know that in biblical thinking, name equals authority, but name also equals fame? So, by obscuring the name of the Creator, Satan attempts to interfere with the Creator's authority, and Satan attempts to interfere with the Creator's fame. Let me show you. Jews have replaced the name of the Creator with Adonai, and even Hashem, while Christians have replaced the Creator's name with Lord. And how about Pan, Zoti, Her, Uram, Shoda Prabhu in other languages? Can you see the confusion? Do you see the interference? Therefore, in this video series, we will focus on the original Hebrew name of the Creator, yod Hey wow Hey. Numerous topics and arguments will be investigated and tested against authentic Hebrew manuscript evidence. Thanks to Justin, my son, who prepared these topics and who will also be presenting these topics. My name is Pete van Rensburg. Please visit us at HebrewGospels.com. Hello everyone and welcome back. We are busy with a series on Nehemia Gordon and the pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton yod Hey wow Hey. Remember yod Hey wow Hey are the four consonants of the Creator's name in Hebrew and Tetragrammaton refers to these four Hebrew letters. This is session number two. Did Nehemia Gordon discover the real name Yehovah? Did he discover the pronunciation Yehovah? Why bother to do a whole session on whether Nehemia Gordon discovered the pronunciation Yehovah or not? It is very important because when new truth is discovered, we should be excited about that and we should study it and we should change in accordance with the new truth that's been discovered. And so I'm going to show you a video of Nehemia Gordon and he is also very serious about this. We must follow the truth when we discover it. And so, I mean, I don't want people to, 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 to hear this and say, oh no, I've been praying to the wrong God. You haven't been praying to the wrong God. You were doing the best you could with what you had, but now you've got better information and, and you should be convicted by that. You need to follow the truth when you discover it. We, we've been captivated by this falsehood for 200 years, since 1833 when, when Gazinius wrote that, and now we have better information. Surely we should act on that better information. But now that we know better, we should return to the truth doing the best we can with this information as knowledge is being increased. So as you can see, Nehemiah is very excited about the new information and he wants people to change because of the new discoveries and the new information that's coming out. So that's why this is an important question. Is this new information? Is this a new discovery of truth? And this is not the only video where Nehemia talks about discoveries. We see these quotes on Nehemia's website. He says about his book, Shattering the Conspiracy of Silence, he says, find out what he discovered on 9-11-2001. Nehemia claims that he discovered this missing vowel on 9-11-2001. And further down, Finding the name Yehovah, how this is a game changer in the debate about God's holy name and why Nehemiah came to Israel to continue his earth-shattering research. They call this earth-shattering research for Nehemiah to find the name Yodah with these three vowels as I'll show to you just now. And more, Nehemiah Gordon shares some of his new discoveries about the pronunciation of God's holy name. And so the message that the public is receiving from Nehemiah Gordon is that this is a new discovery and this, this is a big discovery and now we need to change based on this new discovery of truth. And Nehemiah's followers are also convinced that he discovered the name and that it's a great discovery. Look at these two quotes. This follower of Nehemiah says, There is no God but Yehovah. A year or so ago, 
I heard a brief summary of how Nehemia Gordon discovered the pronunciation of the previously unspoken name of God on 9-11. Since then, I have pronounced the name. Nehemiah's followers are under the impression that the name was unknown and unpronounced until Nehemiah discovered this in 2001. Here's another quote. This person says, I met real Hebrew scholar Nehemiah Gordon. He explained it's God's name. Wow! This was October 2002, just a year after Nehemiah had made this discovery himself. As the September 11 attacks were happening, God's name has been found. And Michael Ruud is also convinced that Nehemiah Gordon has discovered the name, and he thinks it's a mighty miracle. Michael Ruud says concerning prophecy, And if the Gentiles repent, they will know that his name is Yehovah. But for nearly 2,000 years, the name has been hidden, and the Almighty has reached down from heaven. He has interrupted the course of human events, and he does this through people. We are here with Nehemiah Gordon, the Karaite scholar. Okay, let's go on to a video where Nehemiah himself says that this was a secret for a long time. And this blows my mind, Michael. The name has been a secret for over 1,000 years. And now after over 1,000 years of the name being hidden, it's being proclaimed throughout the world through this evidence, this overwhelming evidence. evidence. So as you can see, Nehemiah is very excited to have found a thousand manuscripts with these pointings. And he says that for over 1,000 years, the pronunciation of God's name was a secret. He's talking about the pronunciation. You need to understand what he's talking about. Nehemiah says himself, everyone had the consonants, the vowels were a secret. So oftentimes in the manuscripts, this is what you'll see. yod a wow hey with the schwa under the Yod, and the comets under the wow or the Vav, and no vowel on the first hey. The last hey is a vowel letter. It should have no vowel. We know that for several reasons. But then, so the story goes, on 9-11-2001, Nehemiah discovered the missing vowel on that hey, the cholem. That dot there is an O, it's a cholem. And so, this is the manuscript that Nehemiah was working with in 2001, the Aleppo Codex. And so, oftentimes, it's written just like you see it up on the screen here, yod hey, wow hey, with no vowel on the hey. And so the story goes, Nehemiah on 9-11-2001, the moment that the Arab terrorists were flying their planes into the buildings in the USA, he was reading through this manuscript and he found a place where that missing vowel was there. And they reckon it's a mighty miracle and that the Almighty reached down from heaven and said, my name will be known now. All right? I'm making my name known to you. And so that is how the story goes. And, and what I, I didn't fully realize the significance until the 10th anniversary of 9-11. I was speaking to a friend and, and telling, you know, reminiscing about what had happened. And he said, do you realize the significance of that timing? He said, do you realize at that exact moment when those terrorists flew their planes into the towers and they shouted out the name of their God, but they proclaimed the name of their God because they're doing this in the name of their God, their, their death. And at that moment, the creator of the universe, halfway across the world, wanted his name to be known and allowed me to find this. And I don't have time to show you the whole story on a video, but I'll show you a summary. When Nehemiah summarizes this as a well-known story, an amazing story, how that he discovered the name in 2001. Um... It's a well-known story. It's in my book, Shattering the Conspiracy of Silence, and the Open Door series about how I discovered the name back in 2001. I'm not going to go through that again. It's an amazing story. So Nehemiah says it's an amazing story how that he discovered the name back in 2001. But 17 years ago, I found the first two manuscripts with the full vowels, Yehovah, and that's what I shared with you. Here is another video clip where Nehemiah says that he is the first one to have found it. He's talking about these vowels 
uh, especially the Cholim vowel, in those Hebrew manuscripts. Okay, so as you can see there behind the Chemia is what we talked about last time. He uses this oftentimes. And without that, the pronunciation Yehovah is grammatically impossible. So that first session was important. Okay, now listen to what Nehemiah says now. He's actually found it personally, I mean, I verified it, right? But he found it personally in over 700 manuscripts, which is more than me. I've got about 200 and change to my name, where I, I is a, am the first one to have found it in those manuscripts, but he found it in over 700. Okay, so two things. Should we be surprised that they have now found these, this pointing with a cholim in over 2,000 manuscripts of the Old Testament? And is it so that Nehemiah Gordon is the first one to have found it in those Hebrew manuscripts? All right, because if Nehemiah discovered this, and this is the correct, these are the correct vowels, then it's a great discovery, and we should all be excited about it, and we should all change. All right. So we will now look at printed editions of the Hebrew Bible. When they write a manuscript, there's only one copy. But when they print a Bible, there are hundreds of copies, sometimes thousands of copies, sometimes tens of thousands of copies. So we are going to look at printed Hebrew Bibles and see whether this Cholim was a secret for over 1,000 years or not. This is one of the first printed editions of the Hebrew Bible printed in 1482 and this is Genesis chapter 2 is the first chapter in the Bible that has a name in it. Genesis chapter 1 does not have the name yod -Heh wow -Heh in it. And there you can see yod -Heh wow -Heh, and I've zoomed in so you can see this on a small screen as well yod -Heh wow -Heh with Shua Cholam Kamets. And again at the bottom of the page you can see it there twice in Genesis chapter 2 in one of the earliest printed editions of the Bible in the first chapter to have the name. The Cholim is there twice. So was this a secret 500 years ago? Did Nehemiah only discover this recently in 2001? Or did, perhaps he never saw this manuscript, not manuscript, perhaps he never saw this Bible, this printed Bible. Let's go on to the next one, the Polyglot Bible, more or less from 1520. And this was distributed under the authority of Rome. And they printed like several hundred copies and distributed this in different countries. And this is again Genesis chapter 2, the first chapter to have in it the name yod heh and it has the Shua Cholam Kamets every time, over and over, thousands and thousands and thousands of times in this Bible do we have Shua Cholam Kamets. Was this a secret 500 years ago? Perhaps Nehemiah never saw this Bible. Let's go on to the next Bible. This is the second rabbinical Bible printed in the 1520s by Yaakov ben Chaim, Jacob ben Chaim, and this is again Genesis chapter 2, and you can see yod heh with the Cholim, once, twice, the third time, it's very dull, we can't properly see it there in the black oval, and again and again, this second rabbinical Bible has the Cholim in it thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Was this a secret 500 years ago? Perhaps Nehemiah never saw this Bible. But you know what? The text of this second rabbinical Bible was done so well that they are still selling it today. This is one of my Hebrew Bibles. We bought this new recently. It's a new Bible. They're still selling this today. And it's based on the Ben Chaim text of the Old Testament. And it always has the Cholim. This is just an example from Psalm 1, where yod heh has the Cholim. It has the Cholim thousands and thousands and thousands of times in this Bible. And the Ben Chaim text was also used for BHK, the first two versions, which used to be very uh, popular Bibles, Bibles of the scholars. And so this Ben Chaim text was used for hundreds of years as the main text of the Old Testament in printed versions. This expert says that it, the Ben Chaim text, became the main basis 
of practically every subsequent edition of the Masoretic text until Kittel's Biblia Hebraica in 1937. So for about 400 years, in thousands and thousands of Bibles, thousands of copies, thousands of places in many of these Bibles, this is what it looks like. Yode Wau He has the Cholom over and over and over and over and over in these Bibles. It's based on the Ben Chaim text. It was used for about 400 years. All right, and so in 1937, they changed to the text of the Leningrad Codex. And this was again published in BHS, well-known Bible for Hebrew scholars and students. And this Bible has the Cholom in it about 50 times based on the manuscript. Already in Genesis chapter 3, if you open this Bible and you read the first Torah portion, before you finish, you'll find Yodei Wau Hei with the Cholom. Shua Cholom comes, Genesis chapter 3. And here's an example from Exodus chapter 13, where it's twice on one page with the Cholom. Was this a secret for over 1,000 years? Did Nehemiah perhaps never read these Bibles? What's going on here? What was Nehemiah reading? Oh yes, Nehemiah is a Karite. Maybe we should look in the Karite Pentateuch. Here's a Karite Pentateuch from the 1830s. All right, uh, long before Nehemiah discovered the Cholom. And this is the one page that's available on the British Library. It's only this one page that we can see there. And it's Numbers chapter 1 verse 1 and Yodei Wawe has the Cholom. Shua, Cholom, Kamets and the accent. So is this a secret in Karite Pentateuchs? If it's on one out of one page, we're expecting to find it right throughout this Bible in many places. So let's look at the history of the printing press. Right throughout the history of the printing press, look at these dates. These Bibles all have the Cholom in them. 1482, 1520, 1525, all the way to 1909 and all the way to 1912, and some say to, uh, up until 1937, the Ben Chaim text was the Texas Receptus for the Old Testament, and it has the Cholom thousands and thousands of times, in thousands and thousands of copies of these Bibles across the world internationally. And then they changed to a different text. In 1967, they again published it. In 2009, they again published it. And last year, we bought an electronic version. They're still using this text of the Leningrad Codex today. It has the Cholom in it about 50 times. Does it seem to you that this Cholom was a secret for over 1,000 years? Perhaps Nehemiah never read these Bibles. I don't know. What's going on here? Is this the kind of new discoveries that we should change on, that we should now base our pronunciation of the name on? New discovery? This was my prayer for years. Father, I'm paraphrasing, right? But my prayer for years was, Father, when I stand before you on the Day of Judgment, and you say, why did you pronounce the name that way? I was able to say to the creator, this is how I found it written in black and white in the manuscripts of your word. Okay, so Nehemiah is very serious about manuscripts. We must have manuscripts. And so he wanted to see how the name Yode Wawe was pointed in manuscripts. So we'll now turn our attention to Hebrew manuscripts of the Old Testament. Here is another video clip where Nehemiah tells us how long it took him to find this pointing in five Hebrew manuscripts. Uh, back uh, ja uh, January uh, of last year, of 2017, mm -hmm. uh, you had found at that point, I believe it was about six uh, Hebrew manuscripts that had the correct vowel pointings. Five, all, all five Hebrew manuscripts. Uh, five Hebrew manuscripts, right. and it took you how many years to find it? That was over a period of about 15 years. Or, and and yeah. you started learning Hebrew at age... Oh, in, uh, in kindergarten. Okay, you know, so... Or, I mean, I learned some Hebrew before that, but I was able to... I learned to read Hebrew and English together in kindergarten, you know... 
Okay, so Nehemiah says it took him 15 years to find this in five manuscripts of the Old Testament. And don't think that he's dumb. He could read Hebrew since he went to kindergarten. It took this scholar, this expert, 15 years to find this in five Hebrew manuscripts. And so we should all be excited and uh, thankful for his work. And we should not ignore the new information. All right, this is how this is being presented. What you're seeing on the screen is a photo from a textbook, an introduction to Old Testament textual criticism. And so, this is an introduction for students. And they tell the students, these are the most important Masoretic manuscripts of the Old Testament. These seven. And by the way, just about everyone in the world agrees that these are the seven most important manuscripts. Students know this, scholars know this, professors know this, Everyone should know this. These are the most important manuscripts. So when you have in your printed Bible a pointing that you are skeptical about, or an accent, or a consonant, or anything of the Masoretic text that you need to check, you start using these seven manuscripts because they are the most important manuscripts for the Old Testament. So we are going to start with these seven manuscripts and see how difficult it is to find the name Yodei Wau Hei with these three vowel points. And so we'll start with the Leningrad Codex. It's the oldest complete dated manuscript for the Old Testament. That's why it's so well known. And this is Genesis chapter 3 verse 14. It's within the first Torah portion. And we have yod Hey wau Hey with Shua, Cholom, Kamets. So how long does it take an eager student or a scholar to find this in the Leningrad Codex? You don't search through chapter 1, because you know Genesis chapter 1 doesn't have the name. So you start in chapter 2, and you go through chapter 2, and before you finish with chapter 3, you'll find it. It takes about 3 to 5 minutes, if you're experienced with manuscripts, working in manuscripts, 3 to 5 minutes. If that's not good enough, and you keep on searching, you'll find this many times in the Leningrad Codex. Exodus chapter 14. Actually, this is from chapter 13, as in a couple of places. Between chapter 13 and 14, we have this in four places. And so, if you're eagerly searching through the Leningrad Codex, you'll find within one day's hard work, five or six places where the Cholom, the Shua Cholom and Kamets is there. So, perhaps two days, but if you're eagerly searching one day to find it in the Leningrad Codex in multiple places. How about the Aleppo Codex? This is a very well-known and important manuscript of the Old Testament, the most, probably the most accurate copy of the Masoretic text that we have, but it's incomplete. So I can't start looking in Genesis or in Exodus or in Leviticus uh, because many of these books of the Torah are lost. So I started in the Psalms and I said, how long is it going to take to find the name Yodei Wawe with the Cholom in the Aleppo Codex? So I'm searching through the Psalms, and I find in Psalm 5, um, Yodei Wawe with Shua, and a dot between the He and the Wow, and a Kamets. Now that dot looks like a Cholom, but it's a bit small, and it's too high above the consonants. So it's not a Cholom. Alright? And then the next example, you can see there, Shua, and a dot, and Kamets. That dot there is a Revere, and next to it is a small dot that could have been a Cholom, if it were on the right hand side of the revere. Alright, so you need to know what you're doing with the accents. These are not cholims. But in Psalm 26, we clearly have Yod He Wau He with Shua, Cholim, and Kamets. How long does it take to find if you start in the Psalms? About 20 minutes, depending on how fast you're going. And some of these Psalms are actually missing. It doesn't take that long if you start in the Psalms. And it's not only in the Psalms, it's in the Aleppo Codex about six or seven times. Um, so here's another example, Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 28. How long should it take to find this in the Aleppo Codex in six or seven places? Nehemiah says it took his assistant, T-Bone, about three days to work through this entire manuscript and find this in six or seven places. I'm not that fast. It would take me about six days to go through this entire manuscript. 
and find this in six or seven places. So that's on average one every day for the Aleppo Codex. Here's the Cairo Codex of the Prophets. Remember, we are looking at the most important Masoretic manuscripts for the Old Testament in the world. The ones you start with when you're concerned with the vowels or the pointings, the accents, etc. And this Cairo Codex of the Prophets, it's only a Codex of the Prophets. It's not the entire Tanakh, not the entire Old Testament. And this is Ezekiel chapter 14. And here we can clearly see Yod Wahe with Shua Cholam Kamets. In this manuscript, oftentimes we can't see the vowels at all. But here it's pretty clear. How long should it take to find this in the Cairo Codex of the Prophets? About one day's hard work. Perhaps two days, if you're not working that hard, to find this in the Cairo Codex of the Prophets. Here's the Damascus Crown, or the Damascus Pentateuch, or the Sassoon 507. This manuscript has various names. And you open this manuscript, and the first line that survived, you can see on the right hand side of the screen, Baruch Yode Wahe Elohe Shem. Blessed is Yode Wahe, the God of Shem. And that Yode Wahe has a Cholam, a Shwa Cholam and a Kamets. I've altered the contrast so that you can see it clearly on the screen, but if you look at this on the internet on our resolution, you can see this without changing the contrast. And again on the left hand side, you can see there Yod Hey Wow Hey with Shwa Cholam Kamets. This manuscript has it over and over and over. I think in hundreds of places you can see the Cholam in this manuscript. The Sassoon 1053 manuscript has it in Exodus chapter 10, Yod Hey Wow Hey with Shwa Cholam Kamets. How long does it take to work all the way from the beginning of the manuscript to Exodus chapter 10, one day, if you're working hard, otherwise perhaps two days, and you'll find this in this manuscript. The British Library Oriental 445, also a very well-known manuscript, and it has the name Yode Huawei with Shua Cholam Kamets in about two or three places. And how long should it take to work through the entire manuscript? two or three days, two or three days to work through this entire manuscript. Let's sum this up. Look at this list. These are the most important manuscripts of the Masoretic text of the Old Testament. And six out of the seven of these manuscripts have the Cholam. What kind of discovery is it to find this in a couple of manuscripts or in a couple thousands of manuscripts, because when you look at this statistically, if six out of the seven of the first manuscripts have the Cholam, and we know that there are a couple thousand manuscripts of the Old Testament, should we be surprised if a couple thousand of these manuscripts have the Cholam? And how long should it take to find this in five manuscripts? Let's quickly count this up. The Aleppo Codex, six days to find in six places. The Lindgren Codex, about two days to find this in six places. So let's say that's eight days. The 445 manuscript, two or three days. So let's say that's ten days. The Cairo Codex, one or two days. So if you're searching eagerly so far, that's eleven days. So soon five or seven, three seconds. So soon one or five, three, one day if you're searching eagerly. And so we get somewhere between 13 to 15 days, depending on how fast you're searching, to find six, not five, but six of the most important manuscripts of the Old Testament with the Cholam. Is it an achievement to find one every three years? Is the giant discovery to find five of these manuscripts in 15 years? You might wonder whether these manuscripts were available. Here are some dates of the facsimile editions of these manuscripts. In other words, they photocopied these manuscripts and printed them so that scholars and students across the world could study these manuscripts. And these would be available 
in large libraries across the world, especially in Israel. Look at these dates, 1878, 1953. 1970s, 1971, 1976, 1978, 1990, the Leningrad Codex. And so, 10 years before Nehemiah says he discovered this, these manuscripts were all available for study, especially in Israel. Here are some links if you want to follow up on the availability of these Hebrew manuscripts. But then at the time, I only really knew in 2001 about two Hebrew manuscripts. Later, I found that had the full vowels, Yehovah. I found a third one a few years later. Um, found a fourth one. Last summer, I found the fifth one. Now, think about that. Last summer was 2016. Yes. And that was the fifth manuscript I had found in 15 years. So that's on average, one every three years. Well, as you can hear, the way Nehemiah tells a story it sounds very difficult to find these manuscripts. Here is a scholar, and it takes him three years on average to find a manuscript that has Shua Cholom comets on Yod Hey Wow Hey. And so the people need to get excited because this scholar, Nehemiah Gordon, has worked hard for 15 years to find this in only five manuscripts. And people think this is how rare it is, this is a big discovery. Whereas actually, it should take a scholar or an eager student 15 days to find this in six Hebrew manuscripts, not 15 years to find this in five manuscripts. And, and I said to myself, I have 10 rabbis, but only five manuscripts. I need more manuscripts. And I thought, this is impossible. How am I going to find more manuscripts when it took me 15 years to find five? So we'll get to the rabbis in a later session. But for now, why should we think that it is impossible to find more Hebrew manuscripts with the Shua Cholom Kamets if six out of the seven of the first most important manuscripts have the Cholom? Why should we think it's impossible? Why did Nehemiah think it's impossible? Or is he just trying to get the people excited about this? Because it doesn't seem to me that it's impossible. Like I told you, it, there are a couple thousand manuscripts of the Old Testament. We're expecting to find a couple thousand with a cholim. And so I'm not talking about fragments. There are some fragments that are very small. Nehemiah will say, we searched through 4,000 something hundred fragments and we only found 200 and something with a cholim. These are fragments. And you need to combine these fragments until you have like 100 pages or 200 pages, you know, a third of the, of the Old Testament. And then you will find the Cholom in about six or five or six out of every seven manuscripts. And so I'm not surprised that they found this in a couple thousand manuscripts of the Old Testament. It's exactly what we're expecting. It's perfectly normal. I don't think it's a discovery. And so look, only one of these most important manuscripts never has the Cholom, as far as I know. And it's the Petersburg Codex. It is written with Babylonian vowel pointing signs. And in the Babylonian vowel tradition, you don't put any vowels on the name yod -Heh -Wow -Heh normally. There are some exceptions. And so as far as I know, this manuscript never has the equivalent of Shua Cholom comets in Babylonian signs. One out of the seven. Now I'm going to show you a video of Nehemiah Gordon and he's going to tell us how many manuscripts never have the Cholom. Nehemiah knows that few of the manuscripts never have the Cholom. One scribal tradition was to usually withhold the vowel and every once in a while they slipped up and put it in and some of them were consistent and never put it in, a few of the manuscripts. How many manuscripts were consistent and never put the Cholom in? A few of the manuscripts. That is correct. A few of the manuscripts never have the Cholom. In fact, it's a seven times greater discovery to find a manuscript that does not have the Cholom ever than to find a manuscript that has the Cholom. Remember, I'm not talking about fragments, I'm talking about proper manuscripts like half an Old Testament. 
It's seven times more difficult to find an Old Testament manuscript, like a complete manuscript, that never has the Cholim, than to find one that has the Cholim. Now you might still say to me, but Justin, this was a secret among the West, in the Western world. Because the Western world can't read Hebrew, we've now seen that these pointings are in the printed versions of the Old Testament in Hebrew. In the Hebrew manuscripts. But the average person can't read that. And so Nehemiah is making this known to the world. He is revealing the secret to us that was only known among the Jews and it was a secret. Is that true? We will now turn our attention toward English Bibles and other sources. This is the King James Version, a well-known verse. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. You might say, Jehovah is not Jehovah. Remember, we first of all, we are concerned with the vowels. Nehemiah says everyone had the consonants, but the vowels were secret. So in modern Hebrew, Shua, Cholom, Kamets are E, O, A. Look at those vowels, E, O, A. But if you ask non-Jews, many will know they'll say Jehovah. And Jehovah is simply the English pronunciation of Yehovah. There's no J in Hebrew. So Jehovah is just Yehovah. Besides, in 1611, there was no J sound in English. They would pronounce this as Yehovah. Yehovah. With the so-called correct vowel pointings. Were these vowels a secret 400 years ago? It is estimated that more than 85% of 300 million Americans own a Bible and that more than 50% of regular USA Bible readers prefer the King James Version. In other words, there are millions and millions of Bible readers who prefer the King James Version and they read it regularly and the King James Version uses Yehovah, Jehovah, with these vowels, E O A, in a number of places, in well-known passages. Was this a secret in the Western world the past 400 years? The Jehovah's Witnesses published their New World Translation and they used the name Jehovah 6,800 times. And at some stage they also put the word Jehovah into the New Testament in about 237 places. And it always has the vowels E, O, A. The so-called correct, original, hidden, secret vowel pointings. Were these a secret? The Jehovah's Witnesses also published two magazines. The one is called The Watchtower and the other is called Awake. When they print The Watchtower magazine, they print more than 42 million copies. And when they print The Awake magazine, they print about 41 million copies. And they distribute these magazines in 236 countries. Compare this to the National Geographic, the Time magazine, the Reader's Digest. They only print about 3 million copies per issue. What would you think if I told you that about three years ago I discovered the National Geographic magazine for the first time? And about three years before that, about six years ago, I discovered Time magazine. And about eight years ago, I discovered the Reader's Digest. Would you believe me? The Jehovah's Witnesses publish 80 million magazines per issue between these two magazines. They distribute this internationally in hundreds of countries in more than a hundred languages. Were these vowels a secret? The vowels E or A, were they a secret? Were they hidden for the last couple hundred of years? What kind of discovery did Nehemiah make? Look at this video clip of Nehemiah Gordon. But, um, but before that, everybody knew the name was Yehovah. Everybody knew that before the 1800s. And, and, and it was a secret, you know. Everybody knew it and it was a secret. Let's try again. This must be complicated. Let's try to understand. Concentrate everybody. But, um, but before that, everybody knew the name was Yehovah. 
Everybody knew that before the 1800s. And, and, and it was a secret. You know, everybody knew that before the 1800s. And, and, and it was a secret. Was this a secret or did everybody know this? What, what's going on here? Okay, let's look at these dates of these historic Bibles that used Jehovah. Remember, the earliest ones used Ye or Va because there was no J. And we're concerned with the vowels E or A, which Nehemiah claims to be the original hidden secret vowels. 1530, 1539, 1560, 1568, 1611, 1833. Remember, Nehemiah said the last 200 years, or he said before the 1800s, uh, this was known, and the last 200 years this has been hidden. Look at these last 200, 200 years, 1833. 1862, 1885, 1890, 1901, 1971, 1985. They kept on publishing Bibles that used Jehovah with the so-called correct vowels throughout the 1800s and the 1900s. Just look at these last couple of Bibles. The Darby Bible uses Jehovah 6,800 times. ASV, 6,800 times. The Living Bible, 500 times. Green's Literal Translation, 6,000 times. Does it seem to you that these vowels were a secret among the Western nations in our English Bible translations? Was this a secret? Let's look at Webster's Dictionary, 1913. So this is right more or less in the middle of the 200 year period that Nehemiah says this has been hidden from us, these vowels have been hidden from us. Webster, Noah Webster wrote in his dictionary in 1913. Remember this is more than a hundred years, this is about a hundred years before Nehemiah discovered the Cholim. He writes, a Jehovist is number one, one who maintains that the vowel points of the word Jehovah in Hebrew, the vowel points of the word Jehovah in Hebrew are the proper vowels of that word and these Jehovists were opposed to the Adonists. Were these vowel pointings in Hebrew a secret a hundred years ago? Or were they known a hundred years ago? They were known a hundred years ago. Here's an Adonist according to Noah Webster. An Adonist is one who maintains that the points of the Hebrew word translated Jehovah are really the points of the word Adonai, see Jehovist. And so in the 19th century, I mean in the 20th century, people were arguing about this. In fact, they argued about this in the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. They're still arguing about this today. What kind of new discovery is this? that we should all be excited about. To sum up, Nehemiah Gordon did not discover the Cholim vowel on yod Hey wow Hey, neither on 9-11. And the vowels e o a on yod Hey wow Hey's name was not a secret for over 1,000 years. How do we know that? Printed Hebrew versions since the 1480s have the Cholim. Many thousands and thousands and thousands of copies of printed Bibles. Many of these in thousands and thousands and thousands of instances inside these printed copies. Six out of the seven of the most important Hebrew manuscripts in the world have the Cholim. And should only take about 15 days to find that out if you're eagerly searching. International Bible translation since the 1500s transliterated Yode Wahe as Yehovah, which later became Jehovah, with the vowels E O A. Were these vowels a secret? What kind of earth shattering research is this? Is this what was discovered when the Almighty reached down from heaven and interrupted the course of human events? That someone saw a Hebrew manuscript with these vowels? 
What kind of new discovery is this that we should now be excited about and study and that we should now change how we pronounce the name based on this new discovery? Is this ignorance or is this dishonesty? How could someone claim that this was a secret and that they discovered it? The next logical question is going to be this. Are these vowels, shua, cholam, kamet, in modern Hebrew, e or a, are they the original vowels of yod e Wahe's name, or are they kativ kare vowels? What is kativ kare? What is kativ kare perpetuum? We'll start discussing this in the next presentation. Was kativ kare applied to yod he wow Hey? Until next time, Shalom and Yeshua Mashiach.